Good morning everyone, it's Joker, and today we are back with another slime video. And today we are here for everyone's favorite installment of the How to Score High in Heroes Jubilee series. This time it's Jubilee Blitz the 7th. So, I honestly don't know why they keep putting those numbers there. Like, It's the 7th total Jubilee, yeah, but it's only like the 2nd Blitz or something, maybe 3rd Blitz. <laughs> I don't understand, but as always, I must lead with the quick disclaimer that your results may vary, especially in this one, because you're using the space team on the boss fight, and if you don't have Veldora, you're not going to do the same amount of damage. If you don't have Hero and you don't have Space Melon, you're not going to do the same amount of damage. So your result and your scores will change based on your box. So with that said, let's move into the first normal battle using the water team, which is arguably probably my weakest team. So 36.4 is definitely not great and can be improved on if you have more dupes. But like I'm rocking an 80 Velzard and an 84 Hakuro, so it's like I'm she's not hitting as hard as I want her to. But let's jump into that battle. Alright, here we are in normal battle 1 using the water team, even though I only have one water unit up front. The team consists of Soe for the nuke, Velzard for the nuke, Benimaru for the orange boost, Windmillum for her alt boost, and then the hero for her rewind and her crit. Now, this team does take a, a fair amount of RNG to get the run that I would like, so we may have to reset this a few times. But up front, we're always going to start with a hand of 2 blue and 4 orange, so Soe can go ahead and take care of that. Another unit that you could put on the team would be Phobio, because uh, he he does the same orb change, but I don't know who he would sub out for on, on this specific team for Phobio. So let's go ahead and just send these for now. We'll get the Hawker meter, and we'll start working on Soe's ult. Now next turn, you're going to want to have like a 3-3 three and three of Soe and somebody else. That way you could swap Velzard in, use the Benimaru orange boost, and then use Hakuro, and then you should have enough. So what do we get here? Perfect. Absolutely perfect, actually. So, we're going to use Benimaru's orange boost, and then we're going to swap Windmillum out for Velzard. And then we're going to use Hakuro here. Now this ensures two things. One, that we get an alt for both Soe and Velzard. And two, that we have the DPS to actually kill these two bats. Because these oranges are now boosted by 35% attack. So, realistically, they will die here. But, you know, sometimes you get guarded. Sometimes something happens and you'd end up not. And then it's just a real sad time. But let's go ahead, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then this 200% should kill this bat from Soe, because he is level 100 after all. Okay, good. Oh, you stupid mother. <laughs> okay, we'll be right back. Alright guys, we are back after a long, long set of retries to get the RNG required for at least my strategy on normal one. I hate the water team so much. <laughs> so here we've got four Soways, one Benny, and one Milam, so that's definitely not going to work. But we're going to Orb Steel and boost the oranges. And let's see who we take from. And... okay, that works. So right here, now we're going to bring the hero in for Milam. She only has one card. And then I'm going to bring in Velzard for Benimaru. We're also going to rewind here. Because after many, many tries, I've determined that my water team is not strong enough to kill the second bat. And it is hilariously sad. Like, hilariously sad. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to send these Velzards on this one bat. And then it's going to rewind... Alright. Now we'll redo the turn. 
We'll still have the orange boost, and now we can use Hakuro meter. Now we get the full six card send. And now with this, we can go ahead and kill both bats, and we'll also get the protection gauge and maximum points for turn three. So let's go ahead and actually kill this bat. And I swear to God, if we don't, I'm going to lose my mind. All right, good. It's dead. It is actually dead. Hallelujah. Moving on to turn three. Now it's pretty straightforward. So we have two alts. We have a Hawker meter. We have an entire hand of Soe, actually. Wow. The... Okay, then. That that definitely works out. So we're going to use the, oh, the Hero's Crit Boost, Velzard's Boost, and Frostbite to increase the Crit Resistance Down debuff that all of the bats are going to get. So we'll go ahead and activate that. And now we'll flip in Wind Millum for the hero. We'll use Hakuro. That will give us an entire six card send and another 40 points, which gives us the exact amount we need to alt boost here. So now we're going to send these and then we're going to send the alts. And we want this middle bat to die. I mean, we could spread the damage out, but there's no guarantee that this bat will die. And we kind of need it to die, so we only have two single target alts. So we'll go ahead and send these. All right, so it is dead. So hopefully this doesn't kill the other one. If it does, I'm going to be actually really sad. Oh, perfect. Okay, perfect. So 54.9 crit pierce. And 40.3 with the weak point and crit. So that actually worked out pretty well. 36.9. I think that's my highest. That is my highest. Okay. We're still rank 5, though. We went up uh, about 500-ish points. Okay. That's not bad. So that's the strategy. It takes a little bit of RNG, but you can kind of play around that RNG by orb stealing and then delaying with the rewind. It really opens up a lot of possibilities as to, if you get a crap hand, how you can get around that crap hand. So with that done, let's move on to Normal Battle 2. All right, guys, we are back in Normal Battle 2 now using the Light Team. So we've got Shuna, we've got Gazel, and we've got Hinata as our main single target DPSs, and all three of them are on the front line. And then we have Leon for the Light Boost and Windmillum in the back for the Alt Boost. Now, you can definitely sub out Leon for the hero, if you have her and you don't have Leon. You'll lose a little bit of damage and score, but you'll still get a hefty boost from her crit and uh, crit resistance down. And it just ensures that Gazel is going to crit now. But Leon is the better pick because of his light boost. Um, but you have options here. So you always start with a hand of four blues and two oranges, which makes running wind, or not wind, light Shuna a must, especially since she's single target. So we're going to go ahead and send all six of these orbs, and they're not going to kill both wolves. They have too much HP. We'll kill one, and then we'll do some decent damage to the second one. But we almost have two full meters of Hakuro here. So there we go. So we killed one, and the final 200% hit will take about half the wolf. Yeah. A little little over half. Uh, what, what hand is that? Okay. Uh, well, that'll work. I'd rather have Shuna and Gazel's alts because my Hinata is just... It, she's 84 versus my Shuna's 96, so Shuna will just hit harder. But this will definitely work. That's why you have all three of your single targets up, up front. That way you're guaranteed at least two of them to get their alts. Whether or not it's the one you want is up to RNG and you can definitely reset. But this this will be okay. So we're gonna go ahead and use Hakuro. We're gonna change all these to oranges. We're gonna get both Hinata and Gazel's alts right here. We're also gonna have maximum points and another Hakuro meter going into turn three. So he does have guard and defense, but six cards you can definitely get through it. Unless you're not level then like you're base level 80 with no gear. And then you're on your own there. But right here we're going to take out Shuna for Windmillum first. Now this is important because you want to maximize your light damage, your weakness score. 
and attacking with Windmillum will not add any additional points to that. So you're going to use her first, use her alt boost, and then you're going to flip her out for Leon, ensuring that all three of your units up front are light, therefore maximizing your score. So we'll go ahead and use Hakuro. We'll change all of these to oranges, and then we can use the light boost and then both of Gazel's buffs right here. Now, in, in my testing, if you if my level 100 Gazel crits on one of these wolves, they have like 1 HP left. So I can only send one here, and I definitely can't make him like the end of it. But my Leon is level 80 and very, very weak. So I'm going to send all three of his right here, and then I'm going to nuke with Gazel and then Hinata. And we'll see how this works out. So, okay, so crit, yeah, look at that. He's almost dead. Now this 200% hit from Leon will not kill this wolf. He'll just be very li I lied. I lied. <laughs> okay, well, that's unfortunate. Uh, we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. And we got a pretty good hand. We only have to change two of them. Uh, again, we don't have the Shuna cards, we have the Hinata cards, but it is what it is. We're going to go ahead and use it because I'm tired of resetting this mission. <laughs> okay, so going to go ahead and send this. We'll get both of their alts, and then we will run the third fight, and goodbye. All right, so we have learned here that we cannot send the 200% boost, boosted orb on any wolf. So what does the spread look like? Okay, the game wants to give us a whole bunch of oranges, which, you know what, I'm not going to argue with. So here, we're going to flip out Millum, like we talked about earlier. We don't want her in last, we want her first to maximize the weakness score. So we'll use her boost. We'll swap her out for Leon. Leon, there we go. We'll use Hakuro. And now we can use the Light Boost and Gazel's buffs. So here, we're going to send one Gazel and two Hinata. And then Hinata and then Gazel himself. So do we crit here? We don't crit. So he has more health than I would like, but that wolf is very low. So now Hinata's going to ult 30.9. And Gazel, if he crits, does he crit? We do crit for almost 80k right there. So, the only way that could have been any better was if Gazel's first hit was a crit. But we get 39-3, which is a pretty, pretty good score right there. Not my highest, but definitely good. So, Leon is your best bet for this stage as a supporter alongside Windmillum. But again, if you don't have Leon, you can definitely bring the hero. But your score will be a little bit lower. Let's move on to boss battle three now. And we are back for normal battle three using the Earth team. And the only one who's are here are Valentine, Benny Mario, and Hakuro. Valentine is here for the nuke, Benny Mario is here for the orange boost, and Hakuro is Hakuro. And then for support we have Windmillum for the alt boost, Carrion for his orb change and the crit damage, and then the hero for her crit as well. So we can use Carrion right here to change into a full six card send of blues. We're gonna swap in Benny Maru for, looks like, Carrion. Actually, you know what? Let's swap him in for Windmillum. Let's do that. So let's go ahead and send this. And then we'll set up for round two. Stage two, turn two, something two. And okay, 5,800. Not the greatest, but it is what it is. And, okay, that works out right there. That works out quite well. So we're going to use the orange boost. And then we're going to use Hakuro here to get an entire six card send of orange. Now you need four, because we're going to swap Valentine in for Carrion right here. And you need four orbs to guarantee that she gets her ult. Even though these are debuffed, we will still get it just a little bit over, but that ensures that we have an alt for Valentine, we have maximum skill points, and we have a full Hakuro meter. 
So let's go ahead and send this. And thankfully, these are all type advantage cards, which will be good for our score. All right, so how much do we do here? 5831. All right. So now, turn three, we have enough points to use everything. So right here, we're going to use the crit and the magic boost. And now we're going to bring in Carrion for the hero and use his crit damage. And then we will go ahead and bring in Wind Millum. Use the Hakuro Gauge. All right, and then we will use the Alt Boost as well. So here we have, how much health do we have on this centipede? 9.6. So I'm gonna send the one Benny Mario card and then I'm gonna send the Alt to get it as low as possible. Hopefully Benny Mario doesn't kill, but I don't think he's gonna do 9K. He'll probably do like five or six here. But then we'll hit the alt with Valentine. 4.9, okay. And then Valentine does 67,000. So that's a pretty good run for normal battle three right there. What do we get? 36.4, which, okay, it's still higher by less than 100 points. But we're now, top, we're now number seven. We're dropping as I record. Oh, no. All right, but that is a strategy for normal three. So let's move on now to the boss battle. All right, guys, here is the team that I'm using for all of the boss fights. Protector Veldora, Wind Millum, Frey, Carrion, the hero, and the new Space Millum. So we've got two orb changers here for blues because we want to stack up as much Veldora as possible. Millum for the alt boost, Space Millum for the nuke, and then the hero for her boost as well. However, one important thing that we have discovered for boss battle, all of the boss battles actually, is that Guy Crimson does not have a lot of HP. Does not have a lot of HP. So to get around that, because I still want to stack up our Space Millen with at least like four or five stacks of Eldora, I took all the attacking gear off of everyone but Space Millen. I want them to hit as light as possible so we can outlast. And then Millen, of course, has her gear on, her 12 star claws. And Ranga, who's attached to her, also has uh, claws on. But that's how we're going to get around this. Otherwise, you kill too fast, which, I mean, I showed on stream we can kill on turn 6 if we put gear on. But I want to go for maximum overkill. So let's go ahead and move out. And we'll show, we'll show that even on boss battle 2 we still do a lot of damage. To get a good score. Alright, so let's load in. Yes, yeah, walk in. You the most useless of octogram units that have ever come out. Alright, so right here we always open with the hand that benefits Frey. So one orange, one green, and four blue right here. So we go ahead and use this, and then we're going to bring in the new Millum for the old Wind Millum. And we'll send her last, because we don't want her to do maximum damage, we just want her to get her ult, and then we're going to go store her away for a while. But even without gear, you see we're still hitting very, very decently hard against him, and his health bar is melting right now. So we need to prolong the fight as long as possible. That's a pretty good hand for Millum right there. A bunch of greens. So let's go ahead and put a stack on her. I know this is kind of counterintuitive, but I don't want to waste the gauge that we'll get from this. So we'll do that. And he'll put defense on as the fight goes on, so you will hit slightly less hard. And then all these oranges are nerfed. So let's go ahead and let's see, what do we get for this? Do we get her ult? No, we don't get her ult because they're all nerfed. So you know what? We're going to stack her and we're going to get rid of her. 
let's go ahead and bring in the other Millum now. And then we'll wait for a good hand where we can guarantee Space Millum's alt. And then we'll just go ahead and send all these useless cards. Just to prolong the fight. Trying to get another at least like full hand of blues, that way we can get like the one and a half protection meters we get from that. And like that, okay, that that looks pretty good right there. So who can we swap? We can, oh, okay. So we can use Carrion's Orb Change here. And now we can bring Millum back in for Carrion. And we'll send her in the beginning. Just like this. So we're at 180 skill points now. We've guaranteed that we have Space Millum's alt. Now he's got even more defense right here. He's going to ult me for 700 damage. Congratulations, that did a whole lot. Alright, Veldora boost. Incoming stun attack. I don't really want to deal with that, so I'm going to bring you in. And we'll send these greens. Get up to those maximum points right here. Alright. So we're pretty low. And the kill turn here is, I believe, it's turn 8. So, huh, what can we do? What can we do? Can we stall long enough? Oh, perfect. Actually, we can do this. We can get another protection gauge with Veldora while not actually doing any damage here. And now we'll just wait out this last turn for the stun. And how much health do you have? You have 9,800. Let's go ahead and send, uh, let's see, let's send these right here. Okay. Puts us in a pretty good place right here. He's going to ult one more time. But now, now we can ult with our units and we'll look pretty good. Okay. So here, we're going to use Windmillum's ult boost. Had a lot of people ask me why I use it now. It does affect the back line, just so you know. It does affect the back line. We're going to go ahead and bring in Milim for Frey. And now we're going to use the Veldora stack. Get, you know, that one last stack on her. And now we're going to use Carrion's crit boost. And then we'll bring in the hero for Carrion. And then we can use the... Bop, bop, not that one, bop. So we've got the crit damage, or the crit rate and resistance down. We've got the Drago, we've got the space attack boost, we've got the alt boost, and we have the extra crit damage applied to us now. So now we can go ahead and alt, and I think we can probably send this one Milim card right here, because she's not really being affected by anything but the crit. And then we can go ahead and send the alt here. So, let's see, Millum. Okay, well, we could have maybe done a little more, but Millum does 96.6. Not quite 100k, but what's our final score at? 71.5. Well, we could definitely improve on that, but that's the kind of gist of the battle. Let's, uh, let's go on to boss battle EX now, actually. Let's go EX. Alright guys, we are back in now the EX boss battle, and I still don't have any gear on my units, because even in EX, we still do a lot of damage without gear. So we're still trying to maximize the amount of turns that we can spend stalling to build up the Veldora gauge as much as we possibly can. So here I'm going to swap out Milim for Frey, she's got an extra card coming, so we can maximize that. And we can go ahead and start sending everything that we possibly can here. Alright. This fight is really weird because it's the first fight we've ever had to not gear our units for. And obviously if your level if your units are not as high levels as mine, you could probably use gear. And if you don't have Veldora then the strategy doesn't really matter. Just get him down and nuke him. Probably you can bring Cabby and Valentine here. I might show that team off as well. Um, it's definitely an option for you to do. Uh, okay, so let's use 
what do we get here? Do we we don't get that? However, let's go ahead and bring in you. That way we get the protection, the triple protection meter actually on turn three from both Windmillum and then Rimuru and then the hero, and that will ensure we get a Veldora next turn. In fact, let's just use Veldora now. That way we don't have we don't waste any coming in. So do do do. Okay. Uh, okay, that's not a great hand right there. But we do have, you know, already one and a fifth now. So let's go ahead and use it again. We still need to build up Milam's alt, and she has one card here. So I'm going to flip her out now for Carrion. And we'll wait until we have a good hand that we can send. Um, let's see... I kind of want to send these greens. Okay. Um, I think we can make that work. So let's use Carrion's Orb Change now. And then we're going to bring Frey back in for Carrion. And we're going to use her Orb Change again. Even though it costs 50, we'll make that all back. Because we've already begun boosting these up by 100% for the skill point gain, so we're, we'll be fine. And now, in fact, we're gonna bring in Milam for Milam and start working on getting her alt as well. Which we're almost there. And then we also have almost two full meters of Eldora again. And we're only on turn four. So technically the full turn bonus for EX is turn nine. After that, you start losing points. However, what we discovered uh, during testing is that after turn 8 happens and you move on to turn 9, he gives himself a pretty hefty resistance increase and you will do less damage on your ult. And so technically you still want to hit him on turn 8 to maximize your damage. But you can wait until turn 9 if you don't have the ult or you want to get his health lower. Just realize that you're going to do less damage because he buffs himself up, like pierce resistance and crit resistance. So. Something to watch out for, but here we have a Veldora Gage, and we have a pretty good hand of Milam, so we can get her ult now, and then we can send her to the back af after we use another Veldora Gage next turn. And we're only on turn 5, so I, I think we're still looking pretty good right here. And that's a lot of blues, actually. Ah, uh, okay, well... Actually, that's not a terrible thing right now, because that means we can send a whole bunch of cards that we get for her and not have to worry about it. So let's go ahead and use Valdora again. Keep boosting up the attack and how much these orbs give. So now we're at 200%. And you know what? I'm going to use Frey again. And we can have another full six card send. So we'll send the stunned alt, this, this, that, 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 and that. Oh, come on. And that. So 123 points coming back. Another Veldora gauge. 228 guarantees that we definitely have enough to use everything that I want. And we're only on turn 6. So, pierce rate, crit rate increased. Alright, and a counterattack. So what are we looking like right here? We're still stunned. We have one more stun, which means we can play around for one more time. Go ahead and use Veldora for that last stack. And then let's go ahead and send these oranges and the alt. Even though it's not really an alt. Okay, so we're on turn 8. So this is where you can either choose to nuke or you can wait another turn, but if you wait another turn, he will increase his resistances, and you don't really want to do that. But we have plenty of points, so now we're going to bring in Windmillum for Frey. And we'll use her alt boost. Uh, there it is. And then let's bring in Carrion for Millum. And then we're going to use everything else. So the space boost, the drago, the crit, and then the crit rate. So technically, right here, I do have enough points to also use the rewind where I could send a couple more cards. So we might as well use that just for funsies. And then I think we'll go ahead and send these two carrion cards. They won't kill, though. Like, he'll do okay damage, but he's not going to do 12.8. And that just keeps us on turn 8 and allows us to get his health even lower. So let's go ahead and do that. 
All right, so yeah, he's pretty low, and we have another carrion card coming, so we can probably send another one and then alt with Millen. We could probably send both of these, actually. And then the alt. So, pop, pop. Okay, that didn't do as much damage as I thought, but here's the nuke for 97-7. See what kind of score we get here. Mm, 27-9, almost 28. Not my highest, but definitely a good score for most people. And that is without waiting for turn 9. If we went turn 9, we would have hit like 90k, because he would have increased his crit resistance and we wouldn't have done as much. But let's come back and let's try and use the Charybdis team for people who don't have Veldora. Okay, so here is an alternate team you could use for boss battle running the Cabby team, and instead of having Frey for the double orb change, we have Valentine for the orb change. So I actually haven't used this team in boss battles, so it'll be a learning experience for everybody. So let's go ahead and move out. So it's well documented that my thoughts of the fight between Veldora and Cabby is pretty slim. I prefer Veldora for uh, certain longer events, and I prefer Cabby for certain shorter events. They're both very good protectors for space. Very, very good. Cabby's also the best leader for the Wind team as well. I wouldn't call Veldora the best leader for the Dark team, though. Uh, but this team can definitely work, because you're able to stack up points as quickly, or more, and alts. It's just that, you know, this first turn is built for Frey, so we have to just burn these cards. But let's start working on the Milam alt anyways so we'll go ahead and send these and then we'll get cabby online turn one and then hopefully we get a good green hand next turn that we can use valentine for and oh that's almost a decent hand right there what's the next card okay so that actually works out pretty well so let's bring in remu for milum and then I'm going to send this one blue. Since we know we have a green Val coming, we'll have four Val cards that we can orb change next turn. And then we can use Cabby to boost that. And then that'll guarantee us Milam's alt on turn three. And maximum skill points. So we're looking actually pretty good right now. So we're going to orb change into a full hand. And then we'll swap in Milam for Val. And then I think, yeah, we'll use Cabby. First time you use Cabby today. All right, let's go ahead and send this and we probably almost have a double ult, huh? We do have a double ult, so good. Maximum points, almost another full Cabby meter right there. Like that is the power of Cabby. Like if you can get the greens, then you're not hurting for anything, ever. But if you don't get the greens, then it's kind of unfortunate. Like this, that's, we only have one green card. But we have a double alt, so we might as well send it. Let's go ahead and use the cabbie meter again. You know, keep building that. I'm going to send both of these, and this, and that, and that'll give us another cabbie meter. And we'll just do some chip damage, right? Because we're not building up anything here. We're not stacking attack with Veldora. We're just macking for maximum skill points. That way we can nuke as quickly as possible. So we could have put gear back on these units, oh, really. Like, we could have, but I didn't. And we're still doing pretty good damage. Like, we're doing pretty solid damage. Let's see. We just want to get him as low as possible. Okay, so turn four, he does raise everything up. Okay, that's good to know. So incoming stun attack... Let's go ahead and flip you out for Valentine, right? Yes. And then, what do we do here? What do we do here? Do I send the blues? Yeah, I'll send the blues. We need that 220 points. That way we can use all of the buffs. Actually, we need more than that. So I need another cabbie meter is what I'm looking for, I guess. So, Val- oh, that's unfortunate. Maybe I shouldn't have brought her in. My only orb changer, no! Okay. Let's go ahead and send the oranges. Maybe we just get a natural hand of greens, that'd be interesting, wouldn't it? 
Alright, turn six. Ooh, okay. Will these blues get us, uh... Well, the greens will. Okay, so the greens will get us max skill points and a cabby meter. The blues will also do that. Not max points, though, but we can stall here. So we'll, we'll use the blues. Alright, so now we're up to... Oh, well, that's a hand. Mm, let's see. Okay, so here... Here, we can play around with the hero now. So let's use Cabby. Alright. So I'm going to bring the hero in for Valentine. And I'm going to use the Rewind. Alright, and now we're going to build up more points. Yes, perfect. So let's send this. Get him as low as possible. Okay, okay. Doing good damage. We'll rewind the turn. And now... We can use the Millimalt boost. And the guard penetration. Uh, ooh, actually, no. Can we use that? No, we can't use that. Can we? No. Uh, 55, 55. So, 210... No, okay. Right? Do we have enough to use it? Oh yeah, we should. So that's 110, 220, 235 that we need. Okay, so we'll use that. We'll use the Millum Boost. And then we'll bring in our Millum for... Let's... Uh, okay, so yeah, Millum does have one card. Okay, there we go. And now we'll use the space attack boost, the drago, the attack boost, and the crit boost. Even though I said those backwards. It is what it is. And now, what cards can we send against Guy with 17.6? Hmm. So we have attack boosted and space attack boosted and crit. Probably... What are we going to do, like 10k a hit? This is the first time we're on this team, so I don't know how hard we're going to hit. I'm going to send these two, and then I'm going to send the ult. Oh, we could have sent more. Okay. Well, good to know. And then 82.6. So actually not a terribly big difference in damage. Because we've used Space Rimuru, whose 20% attack is technically more damage than using Carrion's 20% crit damage. But it does cost, you know, an extra 45 po or, well, extra 35 points. Uh, but that does allow us to hit, you know, decent numbers. And 26-3 is not far off from my actual score of, like, 27-something. So the space team with Cabby can work if you have Valentine. Now, if you don't have Valentine, you don't have Cabby, then, and you don't have Val and Veldora, don't really know what to tell you. You might be able to run it with Wind of Eldora for the ult boost, but that's a long shot. But hopefully you guys understood at least the general strategies that you need for this Jubilee. And hopefully you guys can increase your score. So let me know in the comments if you got anything out of this, if it helped you, and what rank you're currently at now. But for now, take it easy, and I'll see you later.